Hi, this is Robbie Parsons. I'm here with another Seeking God video message for Sunday, the May the 24th. Let's get ready. Hi, this is Robbie Parsons. I'm here with another Seeking God video message. And in past weeks, I've been delivering messages from the back of a caboose, from the inside of a car to kind of help illustrate the message a little bit. Today I'm inside of a church and there's a very specific reason for that. We'll find out in a few minutes. Today's scripture reading is going to come from Psalms chapter 9 verses 9 and 10. Again that's Psalms chapter 9 verses 9 and 10. Let me give you some uh, moments to get your Bible. The title of the message today is Seeking God. And I will be reading from the Homing Christian Standard Bible. So if it sounds a little bit different, that's the reason why. So reading from the scripture, Psalms chapter 9, starting in verse 9. It says, The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. Those who know your name trust in you, because you have not abandoned those who seek you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for the gift of your word and for the scripture that is inerrant and that we can trust in the words that come from it. Father, right now, in the next few moments, I pray that you would empty me of myself and allow your Holy Spirit to work through me. Let your word be glorified in these next few moments. May the meditations of my heart and the the, the words of my mouth bring honor and glory and praise to you and may they all fall upon open ears open minds and open hearts that they can take root and grow and help us all in the coming days and weeks ahead all these things we ask in jesus name amen you know i wanted to talk a little bit about someone who has had a huge influence in my life and that's my big brother ron now he's about 14 years older than i am so when he's getting ready to get into high school is when I was, while he was in high school is when I came along. And from day one, he treated me just like I was his brother. There wasn't any rivalry. There wasn't any, any problems at all between us. When I was growing up, he was larger than life. He was an absolute blessing. He brought me a lot of joy and a lot of excitement. I knew him closely, I knew him intimately, I knew him as a brother, as part of my family. And um, so when I was about three years old, of course, he went off to college, he went to go to school at the University of Tennessee. So I didn't get to see him a whole lot then. Anytime he would come home, I would get very, very excited to see him. And then later on in life, as I got older, the memories that we had together were just as precious. Well, I remember one time when uh, he was home from school and after church, he took me to Long John Silver's for lunch. I don't know why I remember that, but it's just memories like that that are just so precious to me. Um, there were many times during the summers or Christmas break that he would have me come and stay at his house in Knoxville, Tennessee, where he eventually settled. And um, some things I remember, uh, well, I remember him teaching me drive a stick shift in his Datsun 280Z. That's how I learned to drive a stick shift. And I uh, also remember one time when uh, he had me up uh, the summer before my senior year and I was working. He had got me a job with some bricklayers, some mason workers. And I was, of course, their labor, mixing mud and hauling brick and block all day. And he took me to a pizza buffet. And I said, I don't know. I'm, I'm not really all that hungry. I don't know if I could eat as much as, as what it costs. Well, I ended up eating 39 slices of pizza that day, plus two Mountain Dews that were about, oh, about that tall. Just memories that become legend after a while. <laughs> Always wanted to be around him as much as I could. Uh, he was just a, a, a huge love in my life. Uh, he loved me and I loved him. And... Um, you know, after a while, I started finding out that his influence kind of rubbed off on me. I've always had a heart for young people and trying to be a mentor to young people. 
Um, in fact, I remember when uh, I found out there was a program uh, that was similar to Big Brother and Big Sister. It was before Big Brother and Big Sister came to our area. And I worked with a 14-year-old boy for about a year. Uh, it was a lot of fun. And, and, and I've continued in, in sort of that kind of a role for decades, just like him. And, and that was something that I think it rubbed off on him. You know, my experiences with my brother have been very near and dear and sweet to me. But you know what? The same should be true between our relationship, between ourselves and God. You know, in, in uh, the verses that we've read here, especially in verse 10, it says, those who know your name trust in you. It's interesting to take a look at that word know. First thing we need to do when we're seeking God is to know him. Interesting thing about this word know is this is the same exact Hebrew word that's used in Genesis when it says that Adam knew Eve and she got pregnant and bare him a son. It's talking about an experiential kind of a know. It goes beyond just knowing somebody's name and their birth date and the names of all their kids. No, it's, it's a deep, intimate relationship. That's the type of relationship that Adam consummated with Eve. It's that deep knowledge of an individual, of a person, knowing them like nobody else can. Well, who knows us better than anybody but God? And we should seek out God. And when we seek out God, we have to get to know him. We need to get to know him in that close, intimate, personal relationship kind of a level. The deeper we seek to know him, the more we know about him and the more influence that he can have on us and rub off on us. Just like my brother had a, that deep influence on me and rubbed off on me. But once we've gotten to know him, in verse 10, of course it says that we will come to trust him. Now once we start to fully know God and get to know more about him, we find that we can trust him. And if we want his influence in our lives, we're going to have to trust him. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. If we're seeking God, we need to seek him first. We need to put him first in our lives. Can't make him second best. We've got to put him ahead of everything. Now, there's three reasons that we can trust him. And there are three examples that we have. God has always proven himself to be true. And uh, he is not a promise-making God. That God is a promise-keeping God. We have the example in Genesis when God flooded the entire earth and uh, it rained for 40 days and for 40 nights. Noah was on the ark with his family, eight people, and all the animals that had been called onto the ark. And after about a year, the waters finally subsided from the water. And it was at that time that God set a bow in the clouds as a promise that he would never ever again flood the world as he had done then. And he has kept that promise. And every time we, after a rain and we see a rainbow, that is God continuing to show that sign that he is keeping his promise and that he intends to keep that promise. All throughout the Old Testament, there are promises of the Messiah who would come. Promises of the Messiah who would die on the cross and shed his blood so that we could have forgiveness for our sins. That was fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Messiah. Emmanuel, who was born God with us. And he came to seek and to save that which was lost. And when Jesus was here on earth, he said that after I leave, I'm going to leave you a promise that I'm going to send a helper, which is the Holy Spirit. And of course, that promise was also fulfilled on the day of Pentecost. See, God is not a promise-making God. God is a promise-keeping God. And there's a very distinct difference in the two. In Psalms chapter 37, verse 25, it says, I have been young and now I am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. God promised he would supply our every need. And if we are truly seeking God and knowing God and trusting God, then he will supply all our needs according to his riches and glory. 
Now, once we've endeavored to get to know God deeply, and once we've placed all our entire trust in him, then we need to seek him. Once we get to know God, it's not enough just to trust him. We have to regularly seek him. It's a daily effort to seek God. But it should be natural for us to want to spend time with him. If we're going to get to know God and we're going to trust him, we should get as excited as I, about seeing God as I did when, when my brother would come home from college. And as we spend more time with him, we should desire to be more like him. We should see his influence rubbing off on us. We should see his, his, his attributes becoming part of our attributes. And then as our desire to be more like him grows into a fire, we should see that influence rubbing off on us and our influence rubbing off on others. We should share the message of the gospel with others so that they could come to know that same sweet relationship that we have with God. So in the coming days of this week, in the coming weeks of this year, let's endeavor to first of all, get to know God in a deep, intimate, and personal way. And then once we've started doing that, let's, let's really try to rely on him and trust in him more because he's never forsaken the righteous. And then once we've done that, let's really try to deeply, earnestly seek him. Let us pray. Father, I thank you so much for these words that have come straight from your word. And I pray that the word is not returned into your void, that it would be a sweet-smelling savor into your nostrils. Once again, Lord, I pray that these words have fallen upon open ears, minds, and hearts, that it would be allowed to take root, that it would be allowed to grow in our lives in the coming days and weeks that are ahead. Help us to have that influence on others. Father, all of these things we ask in the name of our Savior and your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you again for tuning in. I really appreciate it. If you would, leave a comment. Leave some suggestions about what I can do to help improve the videos. Or if there's a topic or, or a scripture you would like to have explained or talked about or, or preached about, let me know. God bless you all. Have a wonderful week. I hope that you get to see me next Sunday.